Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 30 juli 2016. Het is een bulletin van zaterdag. As every weekend this bulletin will be in English, but first we will start with something Dutch. Een kwestie die veel amateurs bezighoudt is een bericht dat gisteren op hamnieuws.nl verscheen, waarin staat dat agentschap Telecom afgelopen dinsdag van 229 amateurs de registratie heeft ingetrokken. Enigszins onhandig is daarbij dat AT dit weekend onderhoud aan de database uitvoert, zodat amateurs zelf niet kunnen checken of hun registratie nog wel geldig is. Ik wil niet speculeren, dus dat ga ik ook niet doen. Ik heb wel enkele mensen gesproken of gemaild. Daaruit komen twee dingen naar voren. Punt 1. Ze wisten niet dat ze vanaf afgelopen dinsdag niet meer mogen zenden. Ze zijn er ook niet door AT over benaderd. En punt 2 is dat bij alle mensen waarmee ik contact heb gehad sprake was van iets rondom de betaling. De zaak lijkt sterk op een zaak van een paar jaar geleden waarbij ineens alle buitenlandse licentiehouders zonder dat ze daar persoonlijk bericht van kregen werden uitgesloten. Dat ging toen om 200 roepnamen. Die maatregel werd toen in elk geval weer snel teruggedraaid. Iets anders wat opviel is dat ik zag dat waarschijnlijk bij één of twee van de ingetrokken calls ook om een aardhofhouder gaat. Well, let's continue now with the regular part of our bulletin. We do have Morse code today, a repeat of an earlier bulletin and also a picture in PD90 of the 13 cm antenna setup by Simon, PA9TV. But first we start with the propagation bulletin of the RSTB. After that we will continue with the last part of ARRL's The Doctor is In on creating a good ground system for your amateur radio station. And now the radio propagation report compiled by Golf Zero Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday the 29th of July. This week we've been looking once again at a blank solar disc. The spotless sun offered a solar flux index of just 72 on Thursday, just six points up from a typical solar minimum figure. Unfortunately, the bad news doesn't stop there. There were poor geomagnetic conditions last weekend thanks to the effect of a coronal mass ejection and conditions worsened again on Thursday morning when the K index hit four due to incoming plasma from a coronal hole. The net effect has been a reduction in maximum usable frequencies and poor daytime HF conditions thanks to D-layer absorption. Next week, another solar coronal hole will rotate into position and this may mean poor geomagnetic conditions and an elevated K-index of up to 5 on Thursday the 4th and Friday the 5th. As we're now entering August, you should really be using the smooth sunspot number of 35 for your VOA cap prediction programs, although the actual sunspot number being zero, predictions may be a bit optimistic. NOAA predicts that the solar flux index will remain in the 70s this week, although sunspots can suddenly appear. This weekend's RSGB Islands on the Air contest may see 14 MHz being the best bet money ban during daylight hours, with 80 meters and 40 meters coming into the road at night. There may be the occasional F layer openings on 15 meters and some short skip sporadic E openings throughout HF. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. Well, for much of next week, there'll be low pressure near northern Scotland with a showery weather pattern producing the possibility of rain scatter on the gigahertz bands. At times, a weak ridge close to southern Britain may allow some limited tropo openings across sea paths to the low countries and south across Biscay. There's still time in the 2016 sporadic E season for jet streams to make the turbulent gravity waves, which may be part of the formation process for E's. The good news is that we have a weak jet stream over the British Isles and into northern Europe for much of next week. This will favour paths into the Baltic and probably towards Italy and Spain if the jet stream is a little to the south of the UK. It's also worth looking for the occasional path to North America since the jet stream covers much of the width of the Atlantic. The beginning of August sees the Perseids meteor shower building gradually to its August 11th and 12th peak, so don't wait, you could see meteor scatter conditions improving throughout the coming month. And the moon is at its highest declination today and losses are low, so another good week for EME. And that's it from the propagation team for another week. 
Put on the manufacturer's fuse if you're tying directly to the battery. Put your own fuse in, and having another fuse behind it is not necessarily a bad thing, although it can be. I'll talk about that in a minute. Mm-hmm. So why is, the, why is there a fuse in the negative lead? Well, this goes back to that same discussion we were just having. The negative terminal of the battery typically is connected directly to the engine block using a flexible, typically braided copper strap about an inch and a half thick. Sometimes it's an insulated yes. thick wire, and it's bolted to the engine block, and it's bolted to the battery. And all other returns from uh, DC powered equipment get connected eventually to the block and and to the battery in mm-hmm. that way. So except for us with the ham radios who put connections right on the battery, we have a negative lead right on the battery. Probably at least that's the way I do it. So now what can happen to that? Suppose that connection loosens up, and I've seen this happen. Uh, either the uh, the braid corrodes and and uh, can actually open up, or more likely the block. The uh, bolt on the engine block vibrates loose, or the mm-hmm. battery connection vibrates loose. Somebody's yes. chained the battery for you, and they didn't uh, secure the negative terminal properly. And you end up with a high-resistance connection on the negative terminal. You won't necessarily notice that in normal operation. But when you go to start your car, the uh, starter motor may pull a starting current. I don't know. It could be 100 amps, let's oh, say. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's going to try to return someplace. Well, if there's a, neg- a high resistance or an open on the return that it's designed to use, it will try to find a path somewhere else. And if that path exists from the um, negative terminal of the, of the radio to the antenna, back to the chassis, and back to the engine block in some other way, you could end up having that current flow in your radio between places that are not designed to carry Ooh. the current, just as, as in the case that you had, the exact same case that you had where you had the positive connection yes. hooked up, but there was a phantom connection on the negative side. Mm-hmm. Well, that's exactly what you'd be doing in your car if you lose that strap, and that connection can be through your radio. So while a positive fuse is designed to keep the car from blowing up, the negative fuse is designed to keep the radio from blowing up in the case that, that the ground system in the car fails yes and that's not a very likely occurrence but as i say i used to it could happen i have seen it happen in trucks i used to service um, vhf radios that went in trucks at one point when i was an undergraduate and and i have seen that happen in trucks Mm -hmm. and there's no reason it couldn't happen in a car of course trucks tend to be used for more miles than cars maybe and so forth but on the other hand they make cars cheaper and cheaper so chances are they're smaller and smaller bolts and, and thinner wires and more likely to to uh, fail. So so that's the reason for that second fuse. So you're not risking as much by not having that. You're risking your radio, which, uh, you know, $200 versus $20,000 or whatever mm-hmm. your car costs is quite a difference. And the as I say, the, there's not much downside in having extra fuses except for one. I used to r- operate HF Mobile from my car coming back and forth to headquarters. And I mainly operated CW because that got through very well, as we discussed uh, sessions ago. I got reports of a chirp Oh, and I said, "Gee, that's interesting." And um, while I was here at Newington, I went over to the W1AW and got some test gear and and checked it out. And sure enough, with key down, I was seeing a drop of a couple volts across my fuses. Ah. These were in the manufactured, supplied fuse block on the way to the equipment. These were the old-fashioned quarter-inch, roughly size, um, glass and metal cartridge fuses, not the newer blade type, which I think tend to have less loss. But there I was. These fuses were actually causing me operational difficulty. Turned out that I replaced the fuses with good quality American-made fuses rather than the ones the manufacturer supplied, which I think came from someplace else, (laughs) and um, the problem went away. So, you know, fuses can be a cause of failure mode as well, but not too likely, but it can happen, and it's happened to me. Almost anything that can happen has happened to me, I think, over the years. I I would never have found that. That would have driven me nuts trying to run that down. Well, Well, enough to make him a phone man. (laughs) Nobody (laughs) noticed if you're on sideband, I suspect. Well, thank you, Joel. I, I... I feel like I'm well grounded now oh, yes. on, on this on this topic. Well, keep your feet on the ground and you'll be okay. <laughs> Thank you, Joel.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en s ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. Laat jij wel eens een lange break? Jazeker, ik laat geregeld een lange break. En waarom doe je dat dan? Nou, dat de Echolink gebruikers ook een beetje lucht hebben. Ja, geef de Echolink gebruikers lucht.